Hello, welcome to Encore. I'm Michelle Harrison Pless coming up on the show. Honouring the father of African photography, Paris's Grand Palais celebrates the work of Malian artist Seydou Keita. Turning trash into treasure, photographer Fabrice Monteiro tackles environmental issues in Senegal using his camera. And erotic or obscene, an exhibition dedicated to Nobu Yoshi Araki, one of Japan's most prolific photographers, known for his daring sexual images, is on show at the Musée Guimet here in Paris. But first, he's widely considered one of the greatest photographers of the second half of the 20th century, even if the world didn't discover his talents until the early 90s. An exhibition dedicated to the work of celebrated Malian photographer Seydou Keita is currently on display at the Grand Palais here in Paris. The retrospective prov provides a snapshot of Malian society during an era of great change. I went to check it out. Keita's world, it is all black and white. At least that's the case here at the Grand Palais in Paris, where a collection of the Malian photographer's two-tone images are on display. Keita's intimate pictures offer a glimpse into 1950s society in Bamako as it moved from a cosmopolitan French colony to an independent capital city. Who was Seydou Keita? He was a carpenter. He worked with his father. He didn't attend school. He started working with his father as a carpenter at age seven. Then when he was 14, one of his favorite uncles brought back from Senegal a, a camera, a Kodak Brownie, and Keita immediately fell in love with the camera. And it was really that event that decided of his later career. So he learns photography himself. He's self-taught. And his father, seeing his progress, decides to give him a piece of land in the family property. And that's where he opened his studio in 1948. Well, he was, he's really the photographer that made the West discover African photography of that time. With his creative mise-en-scene techniques, Keita quickly became something of a national celebrity. Les gens venaient tout le temps me voir. Tout le temps, les gens sont là, nuit et jour, hein, on travaillait. 40 poses par, par jour. Hein. La photo, c'est quelque chose. Hein. He had a range of props and accessoires that he would lend his clients, western suits for men, pens, glasses, ties, hats. So here is one of Keita's iconic photography, where he used one of his famous backdrops, printed cloth, and these two ladies that were married actually to the same man in real life, were wearing the same typical West African robes, made in the same fabrics, and the composition of the print of their robes and the backdrop is really typical of Keita's compositions in, in photography. A master of portraiture, Keita didn't achieve worldwide acclaim until the early 90s, long after he'd retired. What was it in his, his uh, photography that really spoke to you? He is one of the great, great genius of photography. And the amazing thing about him is he only took one picture. So modern photographers, they take 500 pictures of a good one. No Photoshop, no assistance, no smoke, no makeup artist, no nothing. And in this picture, that's him. That's the reflection of him in the car. You see, that's him taking the picture. And this dude who's here, I said, why is he there? He said, I didn't, when I took the picture, I didn't notice him. It was some guy hanging out, he just, you know, he could have been the husband. I said, why didn't you take him? I said, I don't care, I took one picture. So he said, they don't like it, they just cut the picture. This 
is the largest retrospective dedicated to Seydou Keita, the man dubbed the father of African photography. And you can catch the exhibition until the 11th of July. Well, one man's trash isn't always another man's treasure. Pollution and environmental destruction in Senegal is at the heart of a series of striking images by Belgian Beninese photographer Fabrice Monteiro. A thought provoking, if not disturbing, snapshot of ecological issues such as marine waste and global warming. Well, Franz Van Kat went to meet him ahead of his show at the Dakar Biennale. From afar, Han Bay resembles the idyllic fishing port it once was. Yet a closer look reveals a darker reality. Garbage and debris that's blighted this picturesque neighborhood of Dakar. And it's not just litter. Photographer Fabrice Montero has seen pollution here increase exponentially during his lifetime. What's flowing into the sea here is blood from the abattoirs in Dakar. Here the pollution is really visible. You can see it physically. It's not just an idea, someone saying that there's something in the water. You can see it, its color, its smell. An environmental emergency that prompted him to pick up his camera and turn these scenes of despair into art. This series is called The Prophecy. Futuristic figures inspired by local folklore, they depict a post-apocalyptic landscape caused by man's destruction of the planet. The photographer teamed up with stylist Dulce, who created the far-fetched costumes, all of them made with found materials. Tar, sand, fishing nets, and even animal carcasses. Somewhere between photojournalism and fashion photography, Montero says he's trying to apply a new visual language to appeal to the next generation, hoping they'll be the agents of change. Either you see these wonderful pictures of the planet and you say, we must preserve our planet, it's so beautiful, or catastrophic images of environmental disasters that are meant to raise awareness. For me, mixing fine art and ecology is a new approach. The Prophecy Project was two years in the making, as certain pictures could only be created during the slash and burn season in Senegal, where hundreds of hectares of farm and woodland are destroyed every year. It's an apt metaphor for an ecosystem that could go up in smoke if the destruction and the pollution continue to go unnoticed. Next, he's the controversial Japanese master photographer whose work often treads a fine line between erotic art and pornography. An exhibition at Paris's Musée Guimet retraces the 50-year career of Nobuyoshi Araki, one of Japan's most prolific artists. Some viewers may find some of the following images graphic. Disheveled hair, fine-trimmed moustache and small-tinted sunglasses this is unmistakably the Japanese photographer Nobuyoshi Araki. The 75-year-old has been honored in Paris with a retrospective exhibition dedicated to his 50-year career. Araki is known for his insatiable diary-like approach to photography, inspired by every personal event in his life. I love the idea of a photo that's autobiographical and the idea of immortalizing every moment of life. Araki first and foremost binges on photography. He takes pictures of everything compulsively, systematically. He was the one who invented the selfie. Photography as a means of existing for Araki. His most controversial works are a series of explicit photos of naked women bound or tied. These shocked his Western audience in the 1970s. It also blurred the line between art and pornography. The photographer has always maintained that it was inspired by the ancient Japanese tradition of rope bondage called kinbaku and that he never imposed it on his female models. Araki is also a prolific author of photo books, having published more than 500. Each book cover is on display here at the exhibition. 
This exhibition is a journey into the cultural codes of Japan. Sometimes the lesser known ones, the more intimate ones, were taking you backstage. In 1992, one of his exhibitions, Photomania Diary, was shut down by the police for being too obscene. For Araki, though, conforming was never a possibility. He simply stuck flowers on the intimate parts of his female subjects to avoid censorship. In fact, flowers became a recurring theme in his work. They're more than just vegetation. There's a side that's sexual, organic too. I think it's really interesting to see them being hung up like this as opposed to seeing them on a computer. Revered for breaking all the rules, Araki famously shocked Japan after he documented his wife's death, immortalizing her in an open casket. Deep Seeker Laurent reporting there. Well, finally, they've been dubbed Europe's most unwanted. The Roma people are under the spotlight at the Maison Européenne de la Photographie here in Paris. Dozens of black and white images capturing their plight by French photographer Jean-François Joly are on show for the very first time. We'll leave you with a sneak peek of the exhibition. For more culture, check out our website and connect with us on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. Lots more coming up here on France 24. Stay tuned.